Hello, hello. Welcome to a tutorial on an brief, a brief intro, um, introduction to, I guess I should say, uh, physical reality. Because we are keeping all metaphysical stuff um, at bay for the time being. <laughs> to physical reality. You know, by metaphysical we would talk about religion, we would talk about uh, spirituality, um, but more of those in other video series, but not in this one. This one um, primarily concerns chemistry uh, and a particular aspect, a physical aspect of chemistry which I will uh, uh, give clues to you now, uh, but which I will disclose to you at the end of this video. Uh, we we understand reality, um, and I guess the best way to illustrate this would be if I could represent you with a ball and stick figure. Uh, we have a big head because you are very smart, and we have a proportionally a proportionally uh, attractive body, and we have uh, legs of. Um, proportional proportional characteristics and you were standing in front of the mirror and you are embracing yourself look at you aren't you beautiful <laughs> let me draw out a mirror because hey you need a mirror f to have a look at your reflection right have a look at your reflection through a mirror and the mirror is on a stand over here and you see yourself and you are just so terribly beautiful uh, and you see you're here and you're smiling I guess uh, the reality you see here is of a particular resolution and I emphasize the word resolution because in this video series we will see that realities does do exist realities do exist at parallel levels. What do I mean by that? Well, think about it. It's you, the person. You only understand and perceive a given reality here. What types of realities do you see? You see yourself. So you see a physical reality. A physical reality. It's physical, it is descriptive, it is tangible it is um, what else uh, you can you can feel it right you can you can understand it um, it is macroscopic that's the word I was that's the word I'm looking for it is macroscopic macroscopic why because you know the word macro means um, things that you can see with um, I mean any object that is large enough for you to see without uh, uh, see without uh, or or I should say with see with uh, uh, the unaided eye with the unaided eye um, there is another reality uh, which uh, you definitely won't miss because this is the important one. This depends to define who you are. This is the social. This is the communal. This is uh, the familial reality. I mean, think about it. It's you, your sexuality your habits, your obsessions. I mean all these factors are influenced by the society you dwell in. That's why a person from say North America would have different, I, I, mean, I mean that's not radically different from another person at the opposite end of the world uh, of, uh, of our world but will have some forms of differences in the way they treat themselves in the social context. 
the communal reality. What is the communal reality? Um, you have a certain type of understanding of yourself in your community. Uh, communal communal reality has more to do with um, humanness. Your 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 innate ability uh, to empathize. Uh, your innate ability to empathize. to empathize with others, to empathize with others and to um, feel uh, how others feel. I mean that I mean that's repetitive. I mean um, I make it repetitive to to overly simplify, to grossly simplify the notion of you know treating others treating treating others the way you want to be treated to be treated um, that I mean a community exists because we mutually identify our vulnerabilities we mutually understand that we all have strengths but there are weaknesses as well and that's why we depend on each other. We cooperate and we collaborate and create um, a very humane reality um, that allows us to survive, um, that allows us to divide our uh, lives into different professions. That's why you know there are people who choose medicine because they understand the vulnerability of human health. Uh, they understand the human um, vulnerability to illness. Um, there are people who choose um, um, engineering. There are people who choose um, construction work. There are people who choose uh, um, um, other work, or art, um, um, the academia, teaching, um, social work to help others, teaching to teach students. We all understand there is, that we have. We all have weaknesses, and we 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 want to specialize in areas so that we can compensate for what is not there in others around us. That, that's a very communal reality, very humane. Um, the same goes with animals. Animals also understand um, a um, mutual need for forming a community, but with animals it's, uh, I would say, less. Um, animals are, um, again, you know, being a human being, from my perspective, not as sophisticated as we would be uh, in forming uh, communities and sacrifices that we need to make to sustain a community. Ants form communities, but hey, uh, if a mutiny breaks out, um, there's a high likelihood that, you know, the red group of ants would uh, um, vanquish uh, the black group of ants. But we humans have, you know, different perspectives, uh, different uh, ideologies that prevent us to do so. Uh, familial reality. Uh, we see our parents, we see our siblings, we see our relatives, and we we, we, we define ourselves. Uh, and again, these all are interchangeable, very, very interchangeable. They're not mutually exclusive, not at all. Uh, and then we, we know that for communities, for societies, for families to exist, we need nature. Because, I mean, that's what we build our our nations, our civilizations on, right? So nature is key. Um, I mean, now if you have nature, um, you know, by being a human being, you would have, you know, the natural curiosity to ask yourself, well, if nature is key, uh, then who does nature depend upon? I mean, nature is nature. We humans depend on nature, but nature isn't, doesn't nature look, um, um, immovable nature is all it all knows what to do by itself uh, but you know interestingly uh, we can we can introduce the idea of physics um, physics uh, being uh, the underlying the underlying um, rules that nature builds builds upon uh, that nature uh, uses to build itself 
that builds nature. Well, how is that special? I mean, think about it. Um, if physics is explaining nature, um, then um, from a scientific standpoint, physics would s explain the chemistry because different um, quantum level, atomic level behavior gives a rise to, mol to atoms. Atoms combine in proportional uh, uh, quantities, quantities to form compounds uh, that have properties, that have structures. So physics plays a crucial role uh, in chemistry. Um, th it determines um, atoms which in turn makes molecules which in turn makes compounds it's complex inorganic organic compounds and all the study of these in an objective way uh, is chemistry from chemistry we have something else we have biology because you know the physics explains the chemistry but you know the interaction of chemistry uh, um, giving a particular outcome we define life becomes biology I mean that's what we study in biology it's essentially the chemistry that is perceived um, to be a reality of life uh, gets abstract but <laughs> that's how I interpret it. Uh, now interestingly chemistry is the middleman because if you understand chemistry you'll be able to switch into biology, you'll, you'll be able to switch back to physics again from my perspective. Uh, it, it varies from people to people. But why is physics important here? Because we saw nature depends on physics uh, and what is nature? Nature is essentially uh, physics, chemistry, biology together. Uh, it's a gross oversimplification to say these three uh, are accountable for giving what we understand what nature is, but in rea but but you know truly speaking, you know it's mind-boggling, it's breathtaking to think about how these three together dovetail and interact in such a harmonious fashion to give a rise to a complex universe. In the universe, you know, all these three interact and giving out a huge universe, a uh, universe that's, that has no limits. It's infinite because the universe is still continuing to expand. And within this, within our small galaxy somewhere down here in the Milky Way, uh, we have uh, a solar system we call a solar system. If if I uh, uh, take this area and if I zoom in, then what would I see? I would see our solar system with our sun and with our beautiful and uh, lovely and elegant planets orbiting around it. Uh, you know, Mars or uh, uh, Venus. Uh, Earth, somewhere being down here, uh, and, and and so on and so forth, Ju and you know Saturn, Jupiter, uh, Saturn, J Jupiter, uh, um, Neptune, etc., etc. We have our solar system. Uh, that's all great. That that's the bigger picture. But we cannot always focus on the bigger picture. We need to understand the smallest resolution accounting for the the bigger picture. It's much like you know in mathematics. You know, if I ask you what is um, 2 to the power 4 equal, well, you know, we know that 2 to the power 4 would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that is uh, 4, um, then it is 8, then it is uh, 8 times 2 is uh, 16. But see, to understand this problem, a bigger picture, I had to appreciate, I had to dissect and understand the smaller problems over here. I had to understand multiplication. I had to understand the numbers. I had to understand how the numbers compile over 
in, 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 a, in, in a multiplication behavior to give me 16.